Hi, my name is Megan O'Keefe, and I'm a junior at Westboro High School and a Girl Scout ambassador. For the past nine months, I've been working on my Girl Scout Gold Award project, Heart Smart. The Gold Award is the highest award a high school Girl Scout can earn. It is an ADR project to help make a difference in our communities. My project has been based around the importance of learning and performing CPR. Through the project, I've run classes for community members, started a CPR training program at Westboro High School, and even received my Red Cross CPR instructor certification. During the process, I've been able to work with many talented people from different organizations across the state. They have taught me so much, and I wanted to be able to share this information with the community. I have compiled information from my interviews with some of my mentors to share with everyone. The first important thing to know is that there are different heart conditions that may cause someone problems. Many people have heard about heart attacks, but cardiac arrest is a lesser known heart condition. I asked Allison Perrin, the Senior Government's Relation Director at the Massachusetts American Heart Association, to tell me more about these two conditions. So cardiac arrest, the easiest way to think about it is an abrupt loss of a heart function. So it's really your heart just stopping. Um, it can be because you have a diagnosed heart condition or it doesn't have to be. What's the difference between that and the heart attack? So people usually use that very interchangeable and it's not the same thing. So um, you can think of a heart attack as a blockage um, where you know your arteries are blocked. So I always like to think of it as a plumbing issue and sudden cardiac arrest is more of an electrical issue where your heart doesn't um, keep beating. In the case of a cardiac arrest incident, performing CPR right away is the best way to help a victim. Janet Reed, a Red Cross volunteer, shared information about CPR and how it helps. CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation and what you're doing with CPR is circulating oxygenated blood throughout the heart, lung, and the lungs just to make those tissues viable while the person is unconscious and unresponsive. How, do you, how does CPR help the heart return to normal function? CPR doesn't actually help the heart return to normal function. It's more the addition of the defibrillator that that actually does that, but what the importance of CPR is that it does um, circulate oxygenated blood between the heart, lungs, and the brain, heart, lungs, and the brain to keep those tissues alive and viable for the next step in, in uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So CPR is the most important thing you can do in an emergency situation with the addition of a defibrillator. There are two different types of CPR, traditional CPR and hands-only CPR. Although traditional CPR usually uses both compressions and rescue breaths, there is an alternative known as, known as hands-only or compression-only CPR. This is largely what my project is based around. I asked Allison to explain the difference. Obviously hands only is really just the compressions piece of it versus a traditional kind of CPR would include the compressions and the breaths. The reasons why we are really promoting hands only is because what we found um, doing research was that there's enough oxygen being circulated with just compressions in people's while you're doing hands only CPR that you don't need to do the breaths. The breaths always felt a little bit like a barrier to people. They were nervous about doing it. It was hard to remember how many breaths to compressions. They were concerned about, you know, I don't want to put my mouth on somebody I don't no, so um, the hands only is actually something that you can do with just compressions and it still circulates enough oxygen. So then there's not a big um, advantage to using one over the other? There isn't. If someone's comfortable doing the breast because they've been fully certified, they certainly, we would encourage them to use them, but there isn't always an advantage to doing the breast. So what are you supposed to do if you witness someone suddenly collapse in a case that may be cardiac arrest? Janet listed the most effective steps for a bystander to follow to help a victim. The most important thing you can do is to recognize that a cardiac arrest has occurred, meaning there's no signs of life for the individual. You call 911 and activate EMS as soon as possible. You do immediate high quality CPR, meaning you compress the chest at least two to two and a quarter inches for an adult. You allow the chest to fully recoil so the blood can refill the heart and every time you compress it moves the blood around the circulatory system and you wanna make sure you do a compression rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute. Then you want to have rapid defibrillation using an automated external defibrillator. If one is available, it should be on scene as soon as you start CPR so you can get the pads on and shock the person. So you stop the heart um, from whatever rhythm that it's in and then hopefully it'll restart in a normal rhythm. Then once EMS arrives, they give basic or advanced care 
um, pre-hospital. And then once you get to the emergency room that you get good advanced life support in the emergency room or in a cardiac unit and post resuscitative care. The steps of hands-only CPR are easy. First, call 911 or have another bystander do it for you. Then, press hard or fast in the center of the chest. It's that simple. I was able to talk to Westboro firefighter and paramedic Corey Anderson who explained why this was so important. Bystander CPR actually helps a lot. So with modern medicine, we can actually do a lot in the back of the ambulance. But the one thing we have not quite figured out yet is how to be everywhere at the same time. So there is somewhat of a delay between when we get called and when we get there. So the best thing that can happen to a victim is if they have somebody there that witnesses the event, can initiate us immediately, and can actually begin CPR to keep the blood uh, perfusing through the brain. Uh, HA has found that for every minute that um, the heart is stopped and CPR is not performed, the chances of survivability drops about 7% each minute. So even if it's a couple of minutes before we get there to actually start CPR, that's a couple, you know, that's some percentage that's already we're behind by the time we show up. So what would you tell a bystander in an incident like this who may be trained and too afraid to step in or someone who has no idea? What I would say to them is, at a minimum, don't be afraid to call 911. Uh, even outside of cases of a cardiac arrest and just any other medical, um, we would much rather show up and everything is okay than we never got the call and somebody really needed our attention. Um, for anyone afraid of doing uh, CPR, Nowadays, AHA is teaching hands-only CPR, so it's, it's very simple. If you find somebody unresponsive, not breathing, call 911 and just begin pushing hard and fast on the chest. Don't have to worry about breaths anymore. Hard and fast until we show up and we'll take it from there. Luckily, the situation is not completely dire. According to Corey, the Westboro Fire Department does not often respond to cardiac arrest incidents, responding to only 15 calls last year. They also have some cool tools available to help, like the Lucas 2 device. So this is one of our Lucas 2 devices here. So for this scenario, we have our victim in cardiac arrest. Simple enough, opens right up. And all we'll do, so when we first get there, we'll have somebody begin uh, regular manual compressions just like we would. And while they're providing that, we'll set this machine up. This will actually go right over the person's chest. We'll simply lower the suction cup here and just press go. Now at this point the machine will actually measure everything it needs to do and that's it. And now this is going to do everything for us for the rest of the day. So we can have it run continuously or in, uh, in CPR we also teach the 30 to 2 to 30 compressions to 2 respirations. We can actually set this machine for that, so it will automatically provide 30 compressions after that, it will actually play a tone, and that's when we know we have to give our two breaths. So now with this, now I'm freed up, I can provide medication, I can take care of the airway, no longer do I now have to maintain, and there we go, we give our two breaths. So it's an extremely simple machine, but uh, very, very effective. Not even the Lucas device takes out the important step of having bystanders trained in and able to perform CPR in an emergency. With the help of Health and Physical Education Director at Westboro High School, Mr. Roger Anderson, a new program was implemented this year to make sure that all students are trained in CPR. He shared information about the implementation of this program in the high school. Uh, we're having every freshman in the high school starting this year and continuing uh, forever to be trained in CPR and also trained to use the AEDs that we have in our buildings. How do you think this will make a difference in the community? Well, we're going to be making sure that every young person in the community can react positively to a, a negative situation. If someone um, collapses, then the, every student that comes out of Westboro High School will know what to do to get help and to be the bridge until uh, paramedics or other medical people arrive. So far, we have run two days of CPR training at the high school, which have both been extremely successful and a lot of fun. Knowing that there will be 300 new trained lifesavers in the community every year is a reassuring thought for all. However, even 300 is not enough. Hopefully someday, every person will be trained in the skills necessary to save a life. If you are not trained, go do it. As many of my friends will tell you, there are so many important reasons to get trained. Some of them were able to share their reasons with me in hopes of motivating all of you to follow in our footsteps. 
Why do you think it's important for students to be trained in CPR? I think it's important to be trained in CPR so that you're prepared if you ever have to save a life. I believe in the important for people to learn CPR because what I tell a lot of students when um, I'm teaching CPR is, you know, a lot of people think, you know, with all the medications and the things we can do in the back of the ambulance, we can do some great things, but it doesn't mean anything unless somebody's there to start us and somebody's there to keep blood flowing through the brain and through the heart for that medication to be that much more effective when we give it. If something were to ever happen to like one of our friends or like a teacher, that way we can know like what to do because they have something wrong with their heart. And it could happen anywhere to anyone, so it's important to know what to do in an emergency. I, th I think it's very important because we're trying to get the reaction time down. Um, so when the medic me medical staff gets here, they can just take over, but we're trying to keep, keep people going and saving lives in the meantime. It's always important to know what to do in an emergency situation, whether it be call 911, help them start to breathe. It's always important no matter what happens. So, you know, we have a very low um, out-of-hospital cardiac arrest survival rate. It's about 11%. The more bystanders that we train in CPR, we can either double or triple that rate. So in places like Seattle, where they train a lot of bystanders, including students in schools, their rate is about 62% of survival. And so for us, it's really about making sure that there's somebody who witnesses a sudden cardiac arrest that's able to do CPR before medical professionals arrive. That's really our hope. I think it's a lifelong skill that students learn. Everyone knows someone with heart disease or who will be affected by heart disease and cardiac arrest, and it's a skill you have for the rest of your life. I think it's really important that our students have this skill. They're the ones that are going to go out there and, and be there at the games, and it's much more likely that an adult in my age category is going to go down, um, and to have everybody around us trained and prepared to react to that, I think is a really important step because you never know when an emergency is going to happen. You never know who it's going to be. It could be a family member. It could be a stranger. It could be somebody you just met. It could be anyone. But it, if you don't know what to do to help an emergency situation, you're not giving that person the opportunity at survival. Um, that's the best thing that I can tell you. It's very important to learn CPR because you never know. I believe it is important to be trained in CPR for all of these reasons, as well as the fact that learning CPR will give you the power to change the outcome in an incident of a cardiac arrest. Having the skills to save a life is so important, and I hope that I have now inspired you to give yourself that power and potentially make a difference in someone else's life. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see many community members in a CPR training class soon.